submitting that the African Union judicial organ is very key and critical in various issues and matters concerning its members. We need to look at the constitution and composition of the court as based on the protocol on the statute of the African Court of Justice and Human Rights that was adopted in ordinary session of the Assembly of the Union in Sharma el-Sheikh in Egypt in the year 2008. Under Article 16 of the Protocol, the sections of the court are defined to be two. One section is on general affairs. Another section is on human and people's rights affairs. Under Article 17, the assignment of cases to each section is well prescribed. Not all matters can be taken to any section, but each section having eight judges has got its jurisdiction. The section of the general affairs handles all matters, all cases brought procedurally before it. And this excludes matters dealing with human and people's rights. Whereas we have again another area to look at. Under Article 28 of the Protocol, the jurisdiction of the court. The court has got jurisdiction in interpretation and application of the Constitutive Act. It has jurisdiction also on interpretation and application of union treaties and laws within the African Union. It has the interpretation and application of the Banjul Charter, the Charter of the African Human and People's Rights, as well as the Charter on the Child Rights and Welfare. This is again extending its jurisdiction over all questions of international law. It has jurisdiction once again not only over the interpretation and application of the decisions acts, regulations, and directives of the Union and its organs, but as well as contentious matters that from time to time the members can bring before the court for adjudication or for advisory opinion. This gives us, again, the understanding of how the court does its assessment. From the analysis of the protocol, the full bench, that is 16 judges, the quorum given is nine judges. If it is in chambers that from time to time may be created, the minimum number of judges of the quorum is said to be six. How do the judges arrive at their decisions? The decisions are arrived at through voting of judges. The judges that are present in any case will have to vote in order to arrive at shared decision 
or the court decision. But in any case, there is a tie. That means three and three. Then the decision made by the presiding judge has got the casting vote. These are all areas of very, very interesting concern for all of us to understand that 90 days are given for any party to any case to challenge the decision given by the court in an appeal. This again gives us the wide impression that the African Court of Justice and Human Rights in its full capacity has got binding powers in its decisions and rulings and the judges are composed of qualified, procedurally elected and appointed by the assembly of heads of state and government. The appointment follows the election of such judges by the Executive Council of the African Union. This again has got a provision that not more than one judge can come from one sovereign state or state member of the state party. There are such kinds of qualifications and criteria to be followed to give more credibility to the court and vis-a-vis -vis integrity of the judges. It is provided for that the court is impartial and independent. That means the judges must be impartial and must not receive any direction or orders from elsewhere. This is giving what we call the confidence and legitimacy of the court by the state parties to the protocol as well as those who accede to the protocol and join the membership. But as things stand, some states are yet to ratify and submit or deposit their instrument of ratification with the Secretariat of the African Union. Cape Verde has not signed. That means it is not a member or it is not a party to the court as yet. There are also several other states that signed the protocol, but as per now have not ratified the document and have not thereto submitted or deposited the ratification instrument with the Secretariat of the African Union. This is again to, uh, to show that membership of the African Union takes it as a serious consideration the role that the court or regional court is to play when it comes to adjudication matters, peaceful settlement of disputes and contentious issues, and how member states can be served properly within the law and avoid any situation that may yield into lack of confidence and lack of trust of the court. Thank you for watching Peter here, University of Nairobi School of Law, Kisum Campus. I expect to meet you again in other conversations related to law. Remember that legal information is public knowledge for all of us. This is about the African Union law. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.